The next step is to remove your pilot air jets. And for that, you will just need a flathead screwdriver and they will unscrew. Pull them out and replace or place them on your diagram. I've run out of space on my diagram with the diaphragms on them, so I put it on the one with the float covers. You can see right here. The next step is to remove your choke rod, and to do that, you'll want to loosen the screws like this. And you should be able to just push that rod right out. You don't have to remove the screws right away. And there you go, you have your choke rod. You're going to want to take off the little brackets that hold the choke rod. And place them with your choke rod so you don't lose them. I like to put them right in front so you know which one goes to which spot on the carbs. And I did that. You can see it right here. It's hiding. Right there. The next step is to unscrew the choke plunger ca cap, which is located right here. And to do that, you can use a wrench, box wrench, and for these, it's a 12 millimeter. And it's a tight area to get into, but to do that, you just slip it over here and start unscrewing it. Underneath there, there's a spring and then the plunger, but for this specific set of carburetors you have to remove them from the rack to get that off so I'm gonna skip that step right now because I've already done it now that we've gotten everything apart I'll take one of the choke plungers off to show you what they should look like when they're clean They should slide right out. And what you want to look for is this little O-ring on the bottom and make sure that's not torn up and make sure it looks all clean on the inside. You should also check the inside bore of where the choke plunger goes in to look for debris and see if that part needs cleaning as well. All right, so what we're gonna do is get these plugs out. As you can see, we've already gotten two of them out of here, okay? Um, we're gonna do it in a two-step process. We're gonna use a smaller drill bit to open this hole up. And then once we get, the, the plug is pretty thick. I don't know if you can see that from the picture, um, but it goes down pretty deep. So you gotta drill down until you actually feel it go through to the screw below. And then once we get through with that, we're going to take a 732nd drill bit, which is just a hair smaller than that hole, and uh, drill it out the rest of the way. And that'll leave just a, just a hair around the outside that we have to pick out.
So let's go ahead and do that. See that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we'll do it with the second size drill bit. That one actually pulled out. It caught on the end of the drill bit. You can see that on the camera. Let's zoom into that and see that on the end of the drill bit. Okay. close there and see how that piece is still yep still in there and then all you really have to do is once you see that you're down towards the screw just take this and just pick that piece right out play amateur dentist a little bit <laughs> and there it is whoops Your next step is to remove the screws, but before taking them out, you want to turn them clockwise until they bottom out lightly and count the number of turns and write it down so you know what to set them at when you put them back in. So that one was at four and a quarter. And I wrote it down. Now you can remove it. Should slide right out and it will look like this. Place that on your diagram and write the number of turns right next to it so you remember how many it takes to put back.
The next step is taking your carbs off the rack individually. And the reason for doing this is if you look inside here where the fuel comes in, there's two seals inside there as well as seals inside each pathway that it goes through and the drain hoses. And a common problem is them breaking down and causing debris to get in your carbs, making them dirty and causing them not to run properly. So the first thing you want to do is look at the sink screws. here, here, and here. And you want to just back them off a little bit to get them loose. It'll help in the end with everything. But you don't need to take them out yet. Just back them off to loosen them up, which I already have done. The next step is to turn them bottom up. And you're going to start loosening these screws here on the bottom part of the rack and you want to be very careful because I found that these screws were very tight and easily stripped and you can see right here I actually stripped one of them but that's no problem you should be able to find these at your local hardware store to replace now that you have your lower mounting bracket and screws removed, you want to set them aside and then flip them over and it's time to tackle the upper mounting bracket. Again, these screws are very tight and you want to be careful not to strip them. If you find that your screws are too tight and you are hesitant to strip them, an easier way to loosen them is to grab an adjustable wrench and adjust it to the handle of your screwdriver so you can slide it over put pressure over the top to loosen them up And there you go. If you happen to strip the screws, uh, and a simple way to get them unstuck is to grab a, uh, a punch, <laughs> sharpen it on the tip to make sure it has a nice point on it, and then get to the edge of the screw. Okay. All right, and then give it a couple taps just to get a little hole started. And then once you have that tiny hole started right there, Put the point in and start hammering it to the left lightly. You don't want to do it too hard or else you'll just drill right through the screw. But Voila.